Tish and welcome back to my YouTube channel Auto Social UK. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 2022 Seat Ibiza. Now since Seat launched the Ibiza back in 1984 it's become their fastest and biggest selling car selling nearly six million of these worldwide but it's easy to see why. It's a great looking car which offers compact size but also quite a lot of practicality and it undercuts such rivals like Volkswagen and the more premium brands. But is the Seat Ibiza still as good as it always was? Well hopefully that's what we're going to find out in today's video. So if that sounds good then please keep watching and if you like new car reviews and content please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay so let's check out the new Ibiza. The facelifted Seat Ibiza is on sale in the UK now. Prices for the updated Super Mini start from 16945 and it features a host of technology improvements together with some minor styling revisions designed to keep it competitive with the likes of the Ford Fiesta and Hyundai i20. The new Seat Ibiza has not changed an awful lot. Now all cars in the range get full LED front headlights. There's also a couple of new paint colours for the Seat Ibiza as well as three new alloy wheel designs. The Seat Ibiza finished in this FR trim remains looking pretty sporty, but we have to remember that Seat have now separated from Cupra, with Cupra taking all of their outlandish performance models. So the FR trim just simply makes the standard Ibiza just look that bit sportier, with some different alloy wheels and also a few different options inside. Buyers can choose from six trims, SE, SE Technology, FR, FR Sport, Excellence and Excellence Lux. The cheapest model comes standard with 15 inch alloy wheels, automatic LED headlights, electronically adjustable door mirrors and driver assistance technology such as cruise control, autonomous emergency braking and lane assist. As well as 17 inch wheels, the Seat Ibiza FR includes sports suspension, electronically adjustable heated door mirrors, rain sensing wipers and there's also some cosmetic tweaks such as black window surrounds, rear privacy glass and a larger tailgate spoiler. The view from the back really accentuates all of those creases and the angular design of the Ibiza and I think it looks really good. It also wears the brand's new handwritten logo. Now when this first came out on the Leon I wasn't too sure, I thought it looked a little bit tacky but actually I've really grown to love it and I think it looks fantastic on the Ibiza. The Ibiza also gets a set of rear imitation chrome tailpipes. Now most of the time on performance models like the Audis I'd be a little bit upset by this but actually they're not too bad on the Ibiza. Now we have to remember that this is the one litre model in the FR trim and actually I think they look quite sweet. They're also quite well done and a lot better done than some of the more expensive cars. They're a little bit deeper and they actually look more like tailpipes than those cars which are so obviously plastic. Seat claims the Ibiza has one of the biggest boots in the small car class and the official figures seem to support that. At 355 litres it's bigger than the Fiesta and Polo boots but smaller than the Fabias. The Ibiza is now only available as a five door which is the way that most manufacturers are going. Despite this being a compact car it's actually got quite a lot of rear space. I've got plenty of headroom, I'm around 5'5", and I've got quite a bit of knee space as well. The only problem is, is there's quite a large rear transmission tunnel. So people in the back, if you sit in the middle, your knees will be up to your chin. And everything feels just a little bit cheap and basic back here. I haven't got a pull out cup holder with an armrest. I haven't got any cup holders actually. I haven't got any rear charging ports and everything does feel just a little bit cheap. But then again, this FR trim is not the top spec that you can get and it's an affordable car. You can get this car for under £200 a month, brand new. So for all things considered, it's very practical and actually pretty good value for money. The interior is where we've seen the most amount of change and some of those changes I like and some I'm not so keen on. Something I absolutely love is this Nappa leather wrapped multifunctional steering wheel with the contrasting red stitching. I think this looks really premium and it feels like it belongs in a much sportier car. Things that I'm not so keen on, 
These seats, they're not particularly supportive and I just don't think they look that luxurious. But then we do have to remember that the FR trim isn't the highest trim you can get. It now features a new touchscreen, measuring in at 8.25 inches for the SE model or 9.2 inches for the SE technology variants and up. You also get DAB radio, plus Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring as standard. But the one thing I'm not so sure about is this new added red trim. Now it does look like that may glow at night, so I'll input some footage if I find some footage of it glowing at night. And I can imagine that that looks really good. But in the daytime, I just feel like it looks a little bit cheap. It's not particularly the nicest material, and it's kind of this weird embossed feeling. I'm not so sure, but I really think this doesn't add anything. In fact, I think it cheapens the cabin, which is otherwise pretty nice. There's a choice of three petrol engines and the most powerful version is available with an optional DSG automatic gearbox. I had the choice to pick between a few different engine and gearbox models, however the one that I settled on is the 1 litre 95 brake horsepower 5 speed manual. Now there's a couple of reasons why I chose this one, the first being it's probably going to be the most popular car. The CRI Beefer has always been very popular with youngsters and the one litre 95 brake horsepower will both be cheap to insure and easy to drive with not too much power that you're going to end up getting yourself in trouble. Plus a lot of first time drivers learn in manuals and this is where they're most comfortable. The second reason is because it's familiar to me. I used to drive a lot of 95 brake horsepower polos when I worked at Volkswagen so I thought it'd be nice to compare the two cars. The engine is turbocharged and it pulls more eagerly at low revs and whisks the Ibiza up to speed in surprisingly brisk fashion. Wondering how briskly? Well, official figures say that it will get from 0 to 60 in just shy of 11 seconds, which is respectable. The Seat Ibiza in the FR trim gets four different driving modes. You've got an Eco, a Normal, a Sport and then an Individual. Popping it in your eco mode will reduce your throttle input and also reduce some of your consumables to get you your best possible mile per gallon. Popping it in normal will give you quite a normal ride. The steering won't be too responsive and the suspension won't be too stiff. If you go for a sport mode, it will stiffen up that suspension, give you more feel through the steering wheel and also give you more throttle response. Now, individual means that you can tailor this car to exactly what you'd like. You can have that sport throttle response, but you could also have the suspension set to comfortable, so it's not such a hard ride. Now, because that one litre 95 brake horsepower engine is so small and economical, I'd actually be inclined to have it in sport most of the time, unless you're trying to reserve on your fuel. And that's because it gives it a much more engaging drive. The sportier focused FR versions of the Ibiza get firmer sport suspension to improve the feel and reduce body lean even further. You do feel bumps more, but there's still no thumping or crashing around over potholes. As I mentioned, the Seat Ibiza is sure to be popular amongst young drivers. And I like that Seat haven't overcomplicated it too much. You've still got a five speed manual and you've also still got a manual handbrake. And this makes it much easier to adjust into this car if it's your first or second one. The existing Seat Ibiza was already a very safe car and got a five star NCAP safety rating. And the new car is no different. In fact, it now builds on this. Every model gets airbags for the driver and front passenger, plus side and curtain airbags too. There is autonomous emergency braking and electronic stability systems, plus some big car safety options, including tiredness recognition, adaptive cruise control, pedestrian detection with auto brake and a reversing camera. Now personally, I think Seat have almost got it completely spot on when it comes to the functionality of their infotainment and their steering wheel. Now let's start with the steering wheel. It's really nice, you've got some physical buttons rather than touch sensitive on some of the Volkswagens. You've also got some scrolls for your volume which make it really easy to use and they're quite nice feeling as well. Now the only thing with the steering wheel is I do feel it's just a little bit cluttered, especially with your adaptive cruise control being on there, but at least it's easy to get to once you're driving along. 
the infotainment screen is really crisp and clear and very easy to use and it takes up the full screen which is really nice to see. It is a tad fiddly but the good thing is you do have this bar along the bottom so if you rest your palm along that it makes it easier for touching the touchscreen whilst you're driving along. You've also got physical climate control dials. I'm so glad to see this rather than the ones that have gone fully onto the screen. They're really easy to use and it means that whilst you're driving, you're not gonna to be too distracted. That one litre 95 brake horsepower engine is more than enough power for most people if it's their first or second car or as a second car that's a run around. But be warned, it isn't the quickest. Although I should imagine you'll know that if you're going for a one litre car. It's best suited to be around town because once you do get out on the motorway on those long journeys, you do miss the sixth gear and it does get just that little bit noisy. It does actually have quite a sweet little engine note. Once you've got it in sport and you pop your foot down, there is a little bit of a grumble from the exhaust. Now don't be fooled, since Seat separated from Cupra, Cupra does take all of the sports performance out of the Seat vehicles, but it's still sweet and I feel it's sporty enough. So the heavens have just opened just as I need to do my outro, which sums up this video. If it's not planes, it's rain, but here you go. Anyway, talking of the brand new Seat Ibiza, it still offers plenty of practicality in this segment, really nice styling and some really nice engines as well. On top of all of that, it continues to be super good value for money and that's really what matters about this car and why I think they'll continue to sell them in their thousands. If you are planning on buying a new Seat Ibiza, please let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. Just do that just because of me getting absolutely soaked in this rain right now. If you want to see more videos from me, new car content, content on my cars, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later. I'm going to go get my lunch.